Hello and good morning. We are so pleased to welcome Mayor Carrie Turgeon, Jefferson City Mayor. Good morning. Thanks for being with Ray and I today. Thanks for having me. Oh, our pleasure. Our pleasure. It's quite an honor. Yes. I know. Oh, uh, as, yes. as Ray and I were talking about this, uh, we've been planning and prepping for about a month now. Oh. And uh, this has been an incredible experience as we talk about kind of women in leadership, obviously knowing Mother's Day is coming up. We just had International Women's Day. Um, and so so we want to hear a little bit about you. Talk to us a little bit about your experience um, moving into becoming Jefferson City's mayor. Well, thank you for having me. And I am the second woman to be elected as the mayor of the capital city. And it's been quite an honor. And I've served now for seven years as mayor. And we do have term limits, so I have one year left. I can do a total of eight years. And I've really enjoyed every minute of it. All the, the good and the challenges have been uh, very rewarding and we have a great capital city. Um, I also have a Hallmark store, so I'm a small business owner. Okay. I own Carrie's Hallmark on High Street in downtown Jefferson City that we've had in, this, in the family now for about 46 years. My parents wow. named it after me when I was four years old. Oh so a third generation business owner as well. Excellent. Wow. So a lot of great accomplishments there. You know, and one of the things, uh, as Ray and I were, were chatting a little bit, I'm really inspired by women like both of you. Um, Ray has been in uh, incredible management leadership positions, obviously being a leader of an entire city. So I'm interested in hearing kind of some of those perspectives. Um, and, and really, when we think about women in leadership, what makes you the most proud? And I'm going to direct that question to both of you. I'll let you start. <laughs> well, I think it's just that we really can do anything and just being inspiring to each other and lifting each other up. And and so often we might be focused on, you know, caring for our friends and families and, and coworkers. And so we just have a very caring nature naturally, I think, as women. And, you know, often we may not have enough of us in the room. And so I think it's always good to, to be that example uh, and that women really can do anything when we put our minds to it and, and inspire others to do the same. Yeah. You know, that's a very noble response. Mine was, I just like things done my way. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm like, wow, okay, I'm, I can't follow that. But no, I do agree. Um, I, I think we do just kind of have that natural tendency to just, you know, take care of things and make sure everybody is taken care of. And I love that you said, you know, our voice is heard and that we're brought to the table. Mm -hmm. And I think so often that gets overlooked. And so it's one thing to be brought to the table and it's another thing to make sure that your voice is heard at the table and that you ask for that space. And I remember um, we're, I, I'm a little older than you, but I do remember sitting at the table for the first couple of times. And when I say that, the first couple of years, and then finally finding my voice and saying, excuse me, you know, um, I, I have something to say and actually asking for that space. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we all often do that. Um, it definitely takes a lot of confidence and a lot of courage to do it. And so I'll ask you, Mayor Turgeon, thinking about your move into this leadership role, did you have any particular mentors or big influencers in your life as you transitioned into mayor? Um, I really did. And first of all, would be my family, like a lot of us who are blessed to have good family and uh, my grandparents, uh, my grandpa immigrating to this country as a young boy from Greece. So he really gave me that appreciation that we were in the best country on earth. And so I always remember that. Um, and then other mentors are, of course, my parents too, uh, but uh, President Cliff Smart of Missouri State University, I served on the board. I'm a proud bear in Missouri State. I love, okay. love being in Columbia too, so sure. love the Tigers <laughs> too. But um, being a bear, I was blessed to be on the board of governors at Missouri State for nine years. And Cliff Smart is the president, and I learned something from him every board meeting that we had. And he's, you can follow him on Twitter at Cliff Smart if you're not already, I would highly recommend it. And just his leadership style and the way that he interacts with the students and the uh, staff and faculty and the board members, he's very collaborative and watching him get things done was very inspiring for me. Um, another mentor and someone who inspires me is our, our first lady of the state of Missouri, Teresa Parson. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you don't know the governor and Teresa, they're just very down to earth and very real. And they've opened the governor's mansion so much to people and mm -hmm. really made it the people's house. And I just love how open and caring that 
that she is for all Missourians and she loves students and children and I think that she's also an inspiration in her role and taking that role to the next level. Sure, absolutely. And when we think about leadership styles, obviously everyone kind of brings their own leadership style. And I guess I should say, we are taking questions too. I get so excited just to have this conversation with you. But uh, if you were interested in joining us and asking some questions of Mayor Turgeon, please go ahead and send that. I am monitoring chat on my phone here. Um, so we encourage your conversation with us as well, the benefit of being Facebook Live. <laughs> um, but I'm curious, as we, we think about just your leadership styles, everyone kind of naturally has a different style what would you say yours is like I would say mine is being kind but firm and being a good listener and having respect for others so just kind of giving out what we want to get back I think as leaders uh, we want to kind of be a mirror and a reflection of what we would also like to see back from others and and working together and being collaborative and being a good example and and uh, I think that we get so much farther when we work together. We may not always agree on everything, but there is a way as leaders to cultivate that. And it can take time to build those relationships and earn trust and respect, but when you give it, you will find that you will get it back. Absolutely, I think that's one thing, Ray, I know you and I, we often talk about is that foundation of trust yes. and yes. ensuring that we are working to make those small deposits yeah. into that emotional bank account. How critical, uh, you know, we teach on this, right, but critical uh, is that element, that trust building. Oh my element. gosh. Well, I think if you don't have it, you don't have the influence that you need. Um, and then you're relying on pure authority, um, which can then result in the or else mandate um, and pulling title and rank and then it just devolves from there. So I agree totally, you know, those relationships are so important and just building that win-win collaboration with others. So you can use influence over that, that title or that power because um, then it really isn't, you know, it's a zero sum at that point. Yeah. So thinking back, before you became mayor, what was that process like to really build up that influence, build that trust from your community? What did you intentionally do day in and day out to make those relationships? You know, I think it's something that, for one, I learned during my college experience. Uh, I joined a sorority, so I learned leadership kind of firsthand from that. When I yeah. kind of trace back how I, how did I get here, and and I was pretty shy and didn't do a lot of leadership, but, but I did take my first big leadership role as a, as a vice president there for new members, so learned that. And then coming back to Jefferson City, taking over the family business, getting involved with the downtown association and eventually becoming president and leading that. And I never thought I'd be mayor. This was never anything that was on my radar. I never thought someday I aspire to do that, mm -hmm. but you find that as you take these leadership roles and uh, getting involved in the community and things like Rotary and other uh, civic groups really opened my eyes that there's more that we can do as women, as leaders in our community, and people encouraged me to run. And I thought, I don't know the first thing about politics. <laughs> yeah. I, I, what are you talking about? But w as women, we, we tend to see leadership in others that or, or qualities that we may not even notice in ourselves. So mm -hmm. uh, I think it's nice that we encourage others. And I was basically encouraged. I ran for council. I was a councilwoman for six years. Okay actually la uh, lost my last race uh, as counsel for my last two-year term, and I could have turned around and said, well, this is not what Jeff City wants, and I could have ended it right there. And instead, the night I lost the election, people came up to me and said, good, now you can run for mayor, because they wow. saw a vision and leadership that they wanted to see continue. So a year later, I won uh, the race as mayor in a six-person race, and and wow. ended up, uh, the rest is history, and I've loved it, and I think those challenges are what sharpen us and make us stronger, and how we react to whether it's a loss. I mean, when you lose an election, everybody knows, you know, so <laughs> you, it's all in how you handle it, though, and it can be hard and devastating, but then you turn it around, and you sharpen yourself and be stronger, and, and that's really kind of what led me in the path to be mayor, and I haven't looked back, and I'm encouraged and thankful for every day of it. Oh. What an incredible story. I didn't realize that, that about the city council and losing that and then turning around. Um, you know, I think often, we t we've done a podcast on this before, but we talked about kind of that fear of rejection and mm -hmm. how often, especially primarily with women, it becomes difficult to kind of pick up those pieces again mm -hmm. yes. um, and, and turn around and do it. So what a, what a testament to your, your great leadership and to your strength and uh, overcoming some of that adversity. So well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Ray, thinking about that. 
uh, as we consider this idea of, of strength and courageousness and becoming what you want to be as mm -hmm. a, a leader, um, mm -hmm. what are some other tips, some other things that we think about for women in leadership that you've experienced over your life? Well, I think, you know, you like energy attracts like energy. Mm -hmm. And so really kind of creating that vision for yourself, but allowing yourself to be open to how others might see you in that, you know, those surrounding yourself with the people that support you and see what you, like you said, what you might not see in yourself and then living up to that, you know, living up to that. So I think that visioning process is important um, because we all have those little gremlins, you know, that are like, oh, you're not good enough, you know, that are, that are saying that and kind of making peace with that and, you know, well, they're there for a reason, you know, they're there for protection. However, you know, don't let them derail you in that pursuit of who you could be. Yeah. And so surrounding yourself with the people that are going to raise you up and support you. And, and that's what keeps that gremlin at bay. Mm -hmm. Right. We've talked a lot about those, those gremlins. So yep. <laughs> we all have them. We all have them. That's right. Name them. I know, right? Mine is Richard. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I even have a little replica <laughs> that I've made. So, oh. yep. Well, I will say, I know we, we, I'm seeing some chats come in. Uh, they're saying it's difficult to hear me, so I'm going to talk a little bit louder. Okay. Uh, they said it sounds like it's coming out of someone else's mic and not mine. Okay. So we'll go from there. But uh, a, as we consider kind of moving on, and you mentioned the challenges. Obviously, first challenge may be not making it on city council, but turning around and turning this into a win as a mayor now. There were some other challenges you faced uh, over the last few years during oh. your tenure as mayor. Um, the really sad and tragic situation of the tornadoes in 2019, followed by a global pandemic. Yes. Can you talk to me a little bit about wow. um, how do you how do you do that? How do you manage that kind of those kinds of challenges? What was your first step when, say, the tornadoes hit that night? Um, what was your first step in moving the, the city forward? Those are the things that you know things could happen, but you never really think that they will. And once they do you have to kick in immediately. You don't have a choice. You have to be strong. And as a leader, you have to be strong. And then you realize just how strong your community is when you're faced with that. I know just within an hour of the um, tornado, I think one of the uh, first calls, of course, you talk to your family and friends, you make sure everybody's okay. But you know, we had the Today Show call and wanted to do an interview. And you think, how do you talk to the everybody and you don't even know I mean daylight hasn't even come up in your community but I'll never forget in that interview and you have to get it together because you're speaking to everyone in your community saying we're gonna get through this I'm not really sure how but how we're gonna do it is that we're all gonna work together and we're gonna be strong together mm -hmm. and I've never seen so much strength and while I don't wish that on anybody I'm so fortunate and thankful that we had that experience to come together as a community mm -hmm. because so often we think what's important are things and that is not what's important. It doesn't matter. I mean, houses and cars and stuff, it can all be replaced. What really matters is relationships and people. And like in an instant, that just came forward. And that's all that mattered was each other and helping each other. And people that had lost everything were saying, hey, I'm still around. I'm okay. What can I do to help you? What do you need? And they had lost everything. And mm -hmm. so you start to see that and you just realize what really matters in life. Um, but then you have to pick up the pieces as a community and put that together and we're still rebuilding. It'll mm -hmm. be three years on May 22nd mm -hmm. and uh, I'm fortunate that we have such a great community that we help each other out. Um, and then you roll it right into a pandemic, which was kind of yeah. like a disaster yeah. in slow motion. You know, it's like <laughs> yes. a tornado, but in a different way. But what I learned there is that we have to manage the fear that everybody had and the uncertainty, mm -hmm. just like with the tornado. You don't know what's happening around you and how you're going to put it back together. Um, and with the pandemic, I think that we realized that we had to be kind and realize that people were you know, scared and, and also just lead by example. And in Jefferson City, we did that by really, rather than mandating, we just were understanding. And we said, here's what we would expect you to do. We laid out the expectations from our trusted health professionals. We worked together collaboratively and we put the information out and kindly asked people to follow it. Because I think anytime you force things that don't really need to be forced, you need to do it in a way that they'll understand and and uh, show the reason why. And so we, we really showed the information and said, mm -hmm. there are things we have control over. There are things we can do. Mm -hmm. And when we put that out there, people followed it and, and helped each other out rather than 
than being adversarial. So I think so often in leadership, we have to be that example. And so <laughs> during the tornado and pandemic, uh, we were and we did and we continue to do so. And I remember driving through Jeff City, I think it was either a day or two later, we were on our way to the lake. Mm -hmm. And literally, I mean, it, you know, we were the looky-loos and we're just gandering out both sides of our car windows because you just, you don't get that sense of devastation until you actually go through it. And of course, it just played and replayed on all of the news, um, you know, national as well, of course, as local. And what I loved and my ears are on as a, as a leader as well, was your consistency of message. It never deviated. You used no different language to describe how your community would react and was responding. And I think that's so important in leadership is it never changed. It never changed. The words never changed. The meaning never changed. It was a consistent message. This is what we will do. This is what we are doing. This is what we did do. And I think that's so important um, for people when they're following a leader that's built trust with them is to know what that leadership will be doing. And um, it, even though you, you know, somebody's like, oh, we heard it already. I'm like, good. I want you to roll your eyes. You know, I want you to go, I know already. Good. I want that, you know, as a leader. Um, roll your eyes. And you have to be calm and show that calm, I think, to the world because as a leader, they're going to uh, mirror what you do and how you react. And so those are hard situations to remain calm in <laughs> and talk to everybody and know that we are going to be okay and we are going to get through this and we are going to figure it out. And you say it because you believe it and you make others believe it too because they trust you that it is going to be okay and sometimes that's difficult and the reason i knew it was going to be okay is because we had such a good relationship with our police department our fire department our public safety our city our county our state we all came together in all of those situations and in the pandemic it was with our hospital and our healthcare leadership but i, I have to say since we're talking about those challenges that uh, i also had had faith in uh, because we practiced all those things and you cannot underestimate the power of being prepared and practicing. And as we get into another you know, season of severe weather or whatever it may be, you have to practice it. And I know it's easy to you know, hear the sirens that go off once a month and say, oh yeah, I know what I would do if that ever happened. No, you gotta get, yeah. get on the ground, get your family in place. What would you do if you had no power, no car, no driver's license, no nothing? What would you do in those situations? But you've gotta practice it. So I cannot underestimate because there were no severe injuries. I mean, it's a miracle because people uh, knew what to do. And Logic leaves you. It does. So yes. you've got to practice yes. it. Yes. Yes. Gone. <laughs> yes. You, you have to have a plan and yeah. practice and yeah. know what you would do yeah. and play it out. I don't care. You have to practice. With anything in leadership, not just the challenges and the yeah. tragedies, you should practice everything if you really want to be uh, consistent and have a good result, yeah. whatever it is. Whenever emotions overtake yes. you, yes. you know, and we call it an emoji, uh, emotional hijacking, all logic gone, you know? And so even when, you know, something's happened and they stick a microphone in your face, I'm sure it's just like, <laughs> you know, and, and again, just what do I say? What's the first thing that I say? How do I introduce myself and, you know, get myself into a space where now I can address a question? Because rarely, is it ever the issue first? It's the emotions of my, the people that I serve or the board that's sitting in front of me and addressing their emotional concerns. And then we will unpack the issue. You know, time management's not about time. You know, hunger isn't about food. You know, it's about the emotions underlying that. And then we'll feed you, you know, those types of things. I'm, I'm not, putting that issue down. I'm just saying there's, it's bigger than that particular aspect of it. And I think if we can speak from the heart is important as leaders, because Absolutely. I know like when that camera was in my face during the tornado on the national news, and I'm thinking, how do you handle that? How am I gonna handle this? Is for one being calm, but also knowing that whatever I say is gonna be okay. I mean, because we put so much pressure on ourselves to be perfect and say the right thing and know exactly how to say it. But if you speak from the heart and uh, it, it will be all right. And sometimes that uh, we don't always say that because we, we are so concerned about being politically correct or saying the right thing. And what if we say the wrong thing? 
and if you just speak from the heart and try to do that with everything and know that it's going to be okay and, and whatever we say you know it's going to be all right and just do the best we can as leaders as women and, and always speak from the heart can't underestimate that absolutely and I love that that idea of vulnerability with that because I think that's what holds a lot of leaders back yes. is having to be a little bit vulnerable when you're speaking from the heart mm -hmm. um, and I love that you mentioned that earlier going back to saying that the very first thing you did was address the fears I mean obviously the emotions exactly. Ray's talking about mm -hmm. um, but that's legitimate any of us who would have been in that situation would have been fearful so that that is from the heart. It's let's talk about this. Let's sit down. Um, let's have a real discussion. And I think that's one thing, uh, again, just another kudos to you that I've heard consistently about your leadership there in Jefferson City is just your genuineness and mm. the authenticity that you bring as a leader, um, as a, a female leader, uh, second female there in mm. Jefferson City as mayor. And so that's incredible. And that's a great testament to, to who you are and, and what you've developed there. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And I, I have to say that's probably why there's such a consistency of message is yeah. due to that authenticity. Absolutely. She doesn't have to remember what right. she said last time, you know, what was on the script, um, because it's always coming from a place of, of that authenticity. So thank yes. you. bravo. Yes. Thanks. How, what would you say um, in your tenure now has been your proudest moment as mayor? Uh, there's so many. Uh, I love when we get a chance to honor our veterans mm -hmm. and also those in public service, our police and fire that protect us every day, those that put their lives on the line to make sure that we are protected and okay. Those are some of my favorite moments, you know, the honor flights or just whatever it may be, anything that we do to recognize our uh, those who have served our country too. Um, but some of my proudest, I think, is when we opened the Bicentennial Bridge to Adrian's Island. I think okay. that's one of my favorite moments because that was a project we talked about in Jefferson City for well over 50 years in the making. And so that's the uh, bike pedestrian bridge from the state capitol over the railroad tracks down to our riverfront. So now we have a riverfront park yes. and it's really awesome Very, to have that. Yes. So if you haven't been to the Bicentennial Bridge, um, please go and visit because we are a river city. That's why we were founded at Jefferson City, but we literally had no access to the river because of the railroad tracks. So we finally were able to, to build this bridge and, and it's beautiful, it's amazing. And we had so many naysayers like, why would you ever want to build this bridge? What a waste of time and money and who cares? And why would you want to get to your riverfront? It's mm -hmm. just going to flood. Well, all of that was really overcome and people love it and their families and kids and they oh. bring their pets and um, we have a trail down there and, and there's more to come. So that that has just probably been my favorite moment because it was something that people said could never be done and why would it ever be done? And now that it's done, people have said, wow, this is really amazing. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Good. Leaders go first in that vision. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. so, yes. Um, great. Yes. We're, my husband and I are still trying to, to get down. We've heard wonderful things about it, but we want to get down there and actually see it. And then you have your amphitheater yes. stuff out, out there. New amphitheater at Riverside Park. So okay. that's about a mile from that. And that's a brand new amphitheater. We've already had a lot of acts and, and um, concerts and different things happen there. So it's the uh, Capital Region MU Healthcare Amphitheater. Go online on their website and you can see a whole list of events and we encourage people to come to Jefferson City. Every time I'm there, people just say, wow, this is such a cool venue. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a great seat. Everywhere you go is great, whether you're on the lawn or wherever. And so please come down and visit the amphitheater at Riverside Park. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm excited. We'll take a look. I have a one-year-old and so we will, oh, yeah. uh, we'll be bringing him down there as well. Awesome. But as we start kind of wrapping up, I want to go ahead and, and shout out kind of last call for questions or even any thoughts that anybody uh, watching has related to any of our content today? Um, again, it's been a pleasure having you this morning. Thank you. And I guess I'm, I'm curious as we start kind of wrapping things up, a lot of things I often hear and what my mentor told me, the reason why she became a mentor was so that she had achieved what she wanted to achieve and now she was turning around to help somebody else. Mm. So what would you say to the, to the young ladies out there or, or even men out there who are looking to move up into a, a level of leadership, what advice would you give them? I would say don't ever give up, always be encouraged. And hopefully you have others around you, surround yourself with those that'll encourage you. And when you don't, just try to find that encouragement within yourself that you uh, can achieve these things. Mm -hmm. And may, so often we may not think we can, but we can if we work hard and put our mind to it. So don't ever be discouraged and go after those things that people say can't be done. It's okay. And, and do what it is in life you want to do and find your calm. You know, always remember how important it is to take care of ourselves too mm -hmm. and, um, and find those that, that help 
in your leadership and, and find those hobbies and things you enjoy doing in life and try to align that because whether it's as a city, we have our assets like the river, okay? So that was the thing I'm the most proud of getting yeah. to the river. <laughs> well, we have assets ourselves, and we have things that we enjoy doing and, you know, finding that. I mean, for me, it's like my art. I love to paint and draw. I love doing yoga. I love getting out on my bike. Like finding things we enjoy in life and making the time to do that so that we can also uh, enjoy life and be good leaders too. I love that. And I, I actually really enjoy your Instagram account account because I Thank get to you. see all those fun <laughs> hobbies and things that, that, uh, that you do. I, I know you've taken recent trips uh, to the beach. Yes. Okay. Yes. I love the beach as well. So yeah. next time I might sneak into your luggage. But <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> do what you love and sharing what we love is so fun. It is. Yeah. It absolutely is. Yeah. Um, and I encourage, you know, one of the things, and I guess I'll ask you this, when you think about that support system, talking yes. about finding those people. Um, Again, I was often told, find your tribe. Yes. And so how important is that in, uh, in leadership, is to have that support system kind of established around you? It's super important. And we all have great friends around us. And we continue to add to that support. Like now you all are part of my support, Aww. and I'm part of yours. And hopefully <laughs> yeah. the listeners, and, and I can't wait to, to see some of the questions too. But I think we all work together to support each other. and putting that out on social media in a positive way. I always try to engage in things that I think are interesting that people will like and whether they like it or not, the, the good stuff, putting the good things out. Yeah. And also uh, finding your tribe. So you all have now the second woman mayor in Columbia. So we Barbara do. Buffalo. Yes. And I had such a great relationship with Mayor Treese and now with Mayor Buffalo. So we're already planning a mayor's bike ride. We're gonna meet in the middle from Aww. Jeff City in Columbia. Oh, so like it. we're gonna collaboratively, collaboratively work together. Oh. So I think that those are ways that we continually find others in leadership that we can align with and work together as uh, cities or whatever it may be to, to make things happen and get things done. Yes. And I know our former mayor, Darwin Heinemann, would have yes. loved that. Yes. Mm. He rode his bike to work all, every day. Yeah. Yeah. And he was a big proponent of the trails and things. So, so if you like to ride or if you just want to meet us in Hartsburg and have a meal, like whatever your yeah. level of wanting to do, <laughs> yes. you know, whatever That's it awesome. is, just get out and collaborate and enjoy it and get to know each other. Yeah. It's going to be fun. That's fun. It's going to be a fun ride. It has been these last several years. <laughs> yeah. As mayor, I've got one year left and I'm going to really enjoy it. That's Good. great. That's mm -hmm. great. And I love, and I, I think even when I think about trainings that we've recently done, we're hearing a lot of that from uh, our participants is this concept of, of really improving those interpersonal relationships mm -hmm. again, because frankly, COVID did us in a little bit with all mm -hmm. the isolation and uh, not We've forgotten how to act. We did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have forgotten how to act around each other. <laughs> so let's get out yeah. there and yeah. let's um, improve those skills. That's level. right. That's <laughs> right. Let's learn how to play with each other in the sandbox. Right. Yeah. Right. So I have to ask, obviously, now when we think about professional development and kind of what Missouri Training Institute does here, obviously doing a lot of uh, professional development trainings uh, for organizations around the state, how important is professional development? And are there certain things that you do for your professional development? It is, and you feel like it's only a certain time in your life that's when you train and develop. No, it is lifelong training and development. And experiences like this, I think, are important. There's so many ways that we can learn from each other and, and learn from our mistakes. And, and it's not always mistakes. Sometimes those things are meant to be. I talked about some things that could be perceived as failures, losing an election or whatever the challenges are. Those challenges, it's all in how we react mm -hmm. that make us so strong. Mm -hmm. And if those th things hadn't happened, I mean, those guide us sometimes into the right path and where we yeah. need to be. So training and practice, whatever it may be, don't underestimate practice. Try to practice as much as you can with others and and take that criticism constructively and give that constructively to others too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't want to hear that or see it, but I think it's also important because that's how we can help each other to become better and, um, and not to get down about it, but to get back up. Absolutely. How about good books? Are you a reader? Uh, you know, I, I brought books? one Did with you? me okay. because I know you had mentioned that. So Keeping Score with Grit is one of my favorites. So this is Sean Burcham, okay. and he lives in Jefferson City, Holt okay. Summit. So you're probably familiar with Pro Foods, uh, Champs Chicken, yes. So yep. which is like nationwide yes. and started right here in Missouri, in mm -hmm. mid-Missouri, in mm -hmm. fact. So I got to give Sean a plug because he it says straight talk strategies for success. So Keeping Score with Grit. Uh, what I like, of course, I've known them. I went to college with uh, his wife, Julie Burcham, and I really think a lot of him as a leader and also just someone here in central Missouri that's really gone far and been able to take leadership and take a concept and idea and make it broad and 
What I like about Sean too is with his company with Pro Foods that he's worked very, uh, very together with his employees, and he's a leader that is just um, likes to see others thrive and make uh, great decisions that help mm -hmm. the company. So mm -hmm. he's pretty awesome. Okay, that's going to be on my reading list. Yes, I'll be speaking at the Grit Summit this summer. Wonderful. Yep. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. So we're all kind of on the same page yes, here. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Good book. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you, I'm not seeing any. Well, oh, any questions coming in? I lost my chat here. But uh, if you have them and we didn't get to them, please leave us a message, and I will follow up with Mayor Turgeon. Um, any final thoughts? Any words of wisdom or advice related to leadership? Well, I, I appreciate that, and into the future, if anybody wants to reach out, certainly do. If you come to Jefferson City, I'd love to show you City Hall. Uh, I'll show you the Bicentennial Bridge. Uh, I welcome all of that. I welcome uh, working together and showing people the, the capital. And of course, um, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Yes. We'll have to take a selfie with the mayor before yes. we leave, and we'll have to post that. Yes. Uh, but just continue to lift each other up and help each other out, and um, don't ever give up on what it, what you think you'll do. Like I said, I never thought I'd be mayor, so I never thought this was the path, but uh, very fortunate. Just whatever, uh, I know you mentioned kind of being open to the possibilities, mm -hmm. and often we'll say, I can't do that, or I, I'm not the right one for that. Don't ever close those doors. Just leave them open because you never know just being open to receive you know what's out there uh, I think is so important and that's what we help each other do so Absolutely. yeah yeah, yeah. Absolutely. thank you so much thank you're welcome you very, very much for you're your welcome time, Mayor and thank you all who tuned in with us today uh, you'll be able to watch the recording share it with your friends share it uh, Facebook LinkedIn all of that because uh, we want to get the great message out today to everyone so we look forward to seeing you again here in a couple weeks go be great Thank <laughs> you.